right now at 5. Montgomery County's Board of Education calling for the superintendent's resignation. 7 News asks why the reason is being kept under wraps. A second entertainment complex coming to Northern Virginia? Reaction tonight to a bill that could bring a casino to Tyson's Corner. Plus, D.C.'s crime crisis center stage before the council. Members take the last step needed before voting on a massive new crime bill. Well, thank you for joining us at 5. We want to welcome you to our brand new studio. We have so many monitors and so much to show you to help deliver the news here. Yeah, big improved experience for you, the viewers. And of course, we are happy to finally debut it. You're going to notice it's a much bigger space we're uh -huh. in now. <laughs> and uh, it includes the iconic landmarks in the nation's capital. What you're used to seeing outside, we've got it inside now. And 7 News Chief Meteorologist Veronica Johnson has a brand new weather center. Hey, VJ. Hey there, guys. Yeah, uh, filled with lots of weather technology that we've uh, put together for you. So uh, we'll be showcasing a lot of the big storms from right here. And of course, with your favorite team of meteorologists. So can't wait for what awaits us in the next couple of uh, years. Yeah, it's going to pay off big for people wanting to know the very latest for with sure. weather. And of course, on the alert desk. We've got John Rogers. He's going to have all the developing stories as they happen throughout our newscast here on 7 News. Yeah, hey. I, I selfishly think I have one of the most fun jobs here. You know, <laughs> always in the mix. I'm glad I'm actually close to the set and being so far away, but I got a lot to talk about today, so uh, stay tuned. Yeah, we will check in with you very soon. Thank you all. Well, this is a time lapse that we now want to show with you of the transformation of our new studio. You can see just how much work crews put into making this a state of the art set. We are so excited to have you along on this new journey for us here at 7 News. Well, today, D.C.'s rising crime problem took center stage during a city council hearing. A committee is taking up a major bill to crack down on the violence. And that legislation is made up of several measures that were previously introduced. 7 News' Tom Rousey is live outside the Wilson Building in Northwest. Tom, what happened today and what comes next? Well, Scott and Michelle, this sign is left over from the council meeting earlier today because right now the doors are locked. It is over, but here is video from that meeting. It was called the Committee of the Whole. Basically, that is the last stop for a bill before the full council votes on it. What they were talking about was this giant crime bill we've been telling you about for a couple weeks. A lot of folks on the council had questions about it. There were two controversial issues that seemed to come up again and again. One of them involved drug-free zones. Councilmember Brooke Pinto in her bill, she has proposed bringing back drug free zones in DC. Basically police for 120 straight hours could declare an area a drug free zone and then any folks that showed up that they thought were there to participate in the drug trade, they could then arrest. But some council members concerned folks constitutional rights could be violated. Also concerned what the point of it all is. Here's an exchange with council member Robert White and Brooke Pinto on that and then an exchange after that between council member Kenyon McDuffie and Pinto on DNA collection. I want to understand how the drug-free zone proposal makes us safer without a comprehensive strategy for drugs and drug issues, then it seems like this activity, even if it gets disrupted, moves one block over. And I think that's an important tool to give the police to disrupt uh, these certain specific few but egregious areas of these repeat offenses. Maybe just, just raise a couple of things so uh, that you're aware. The expansion of DNA collection by MPD for individuals who have merely been arrested for certain crimes and, and not convicted. DNA testing, this is done in 31 other states. This is not an out there proposal. So you can see there was some concerns there, and from what I'm hearing, it is likely this crime bill will pass in a couple of weeks, but there will probably be at least some small changes to it. So the first vote is expected to be two weeks from today. In D.C., you got to pass things twice to make them law. So the second vote will be either later in February or in early March. That is the plan at the moment. Reporting live inside the Wilson Building in D.C., I'm Tom Rousey, 7 News. Tom, thank you. Now to your first alert forecast. We are tracking the chance for rain overnight and it could lead to some slick spots in some areas. Yeah, need to be careful. And the ice on the Potomac River 
finally melting perhaps as temperatures warm up later this week. 7 News Chief Meteorologist Veronica Johnson tracking it all for us from the Weather Center. Yeah, so tomorrow morning, guys, will be a few pockets around the area where temperatures are going to be right around freezing. But we're talking about the big warm up too for the rest of the work week here. So today was the first day we got to 44 degrees in more than a week. Look at tomorrow, you're at 48. And then temperatures close to 70 degrees by Friday before we start to fall off over the weekend. So right now, some scattered clouds across the area. Your temperature sits at 44 degrees in D.C. It's been a fairly comfortable day considering how cold it's been over the last few. 44 for D.C., 43 degrees currently in Quantico in 47 degrees right now in Fredericksburg. That's our warm spot, but not too bad for Lovettsville and Winchester. You are now sitting at 46 degrees this evening. Here we go. This is what we're talking about. Our temperatures by 10, 11 p.m. dropping very close to freezing and we'll certainly be there tomorrow morning. Morning. So clouds will continue to move in out ahead of the next weather maker. And by morning, you've got 32 degrees in D.C., 29 degrees in Gaithersburg, areas around Frederick, Maryland, 30 with just a slight amount of moisture tomorrow morning. Could have some fog, maybe even some drizzle. We'll watch for some patchiness of ice, especially on the bridges and overpasses, mainly north and far west of D.C., those areas north of a 50, 70, 270 way and out I-66 for tomorrow morning. But we're going to get a lot of rain this week, including the weekend. I'm back in just a couple of minutes. Michelle, I'll show you how much rain will fall. All right, PJ, we'll see you then. Thank you. New developments in the investigation into Metro's wheel troubles. Yeah, John Rogers is at the alert desk with the new information just released by the Washington Metro Rail Safety Commission. John, what did they find? Well, this commission frankly found a lot of issues, but they did find some signs of progress. So you may remember that this commission was actually federally created to oversee Metro on rail safety, and it's really been under the spotlight since an October 2021 derailment exposed major safety issues with its 7000 series wheels. So as we've reported before, the wheels on that train were out of alignment. Today, the commission found the Metro Rail is not carrying out key safety commitments. They said the Metro Rail was aware of this wheel migration since at least 2014. They also found maintenance personnel do not have uniform understanding of proper safety procedures. The commission also said Metro Rail has 44 rail traffic controllers when it requires a minimum of 61. But they said Metro Rail has begun work on identifying hazards and training new personnel. The commission also said Metro Rail is assembling new wheel sets for the 7000 series and has already begun using some of them. And the commission ultimately expressed optimism that Metro Rail is making the steps to address these issues on its trains. Yeah, all right, great update. Thank you, John. Well, seven news with five stops at five covering stories around the DMV. Our first stop is in Fairfax County where detectives have charged two people in connection to a robbery that ended with police finding 13 guns and four pounds of methamphetamines. That robbery happened just last month at a hotel in Vienna. Police say the suspects pistol whipped the victim before stealing money. After their arrest, detectives searched a home in Prince George's County and found the stolen guns and drugs. Also in Fairfax County, the police department's bomb squad demonstrated how officers handle explosive devices and respond to potential threats. This is an elite specialized unit and 7 News also got to see the bomb squad's canines in action. The team also uses robots to help in certain situations. The training was held this morning in Lorton. Now to Prince George's County, where the police department's gang unit has arrested nine people in connection to a major drug bust involving nearly 14,000 fentanyl pills. We are told that multiple guns and cocaine were also found last week inside an apartment in Riverdale. All nine suspects are facing multiple charges for drug trafficking, guns and drugs. Our next stop is in Northwest DC, where the fire department released video of a rescue this morning. We're told an injured worker had to be rescued from the roof of this building that's under construction along Park Road. Crews used a construction crane to lower him down in that rescue basket. Quite a dramatic scene. The victim is expected to be okay. And our last stop takes us to Alexandria, where Metro Transit Police handed out anti-theft devices for Kia and Hyundai drivers. This is part of an ongoing effort to reduce car thefts around the DMV. The giveaways were held this morning at the Huntington Metro Station, and this was just one of several wheel lock events over the past several months. All right. Now to a crisis in the classroom. We are following in Montgomery County, where a show of support 
took place today for embattled superintendent Dr. Monifa McKnight. Yeah, this comes a day after she is accused or excuse the school board of requesting her resignation. Today, outside the Board of Education, dozens of residents gathered in a push to keep the superintendent in her current position. 7 News' Christian Flores has this update new at 5. All of this comes after that investigation by Montgomery County's Inspector General found former middle school principal Joel Beidelman violated the school system's sexual harassment and bullying policies. We attended today's Board of Education meeting and Dr. McKnight was present but devoted her focus to the purpose of that meeting, which was to discuss the operating budget. On Monday, McKnight told 7 News through a statement that the school board has expressed a desire for her to step away from her role as superintendent. She says she plans to stay on the job and defend her reputation. Today, we spoke to an educator, NAACP member, and longtime county resident who explained why they too want Dr. McKnight to stay put. There have um, been some concerns that maybe she was aware of the allegations against Dr. Joel Beidelman, but did not make the school board aware. And now the school board seems to think that it would be appropriate for her to resign. Your thoughts about that? I do not agree with that. I do not believe she was aware. And I believe that we should continue to support her as she's doing such a fine job. This superintendent had no idea what was going on with the principal who was put on leave. Dr. McKnight has previously stated she did not know anything about the bullying and sexual harassment allegations against Beidelman before she approved his promotion to principal of Paint Branch High in June of 2023. However, the Jackson Lewis report says that multiple members of the administration knew about the investigation into Beidelman, but all names in the report are redacted. Christian Flores, 7 News. All right, coming up at 6, we'll bring you more reaction from Montgomery County as the community is responding to these latest developments involving the superintendent and the school board. Still ahead at 5, new developments involving possible cuts to programs in Prince George's County Public Schools. The decision made by the county council. Also coming up, proposed plans to build a casino in Northern Virginia. But not everyone thinks this is a winning idea. U.S. and U.K. carrying out more airstrikes on Houthi targets in Yemen. I'm Atrao Nishar with their next move to try and stop attacks in the Red Sea. And who is ready for a little taste of spring? Hey, it's coming. Some higher temperatures for the end of the week, but also rain chances are going to be increasing and even a little bit of humidity. I'm tracking the next weather maker right now. It's down around Texas and Arkansas. So when can we expect the first raindrops here and how long will that rain last? I'm back after the break with a look at your seven day forecast.